Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is a newly crowned IFBB Pro and the 2022 Women's Bodybuilding North Americans Overall Champ. Today's guest is Ava Melillo. Ava, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. So I'm super excited to chop it up with you. I know uh, there's some people that are excited to uh, listen to this episode, watch this episode. So I'm, I'm excited to get it out. Um, the first question, Ava, that I have for you is who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? I, um, I think I'm more partial to Dorian Yates. Oh, I like that. He's kind of, he did his, his own thing. He just worked. He had a love for training. And I think, um, that's what I can relate to most is, is my love for training, you know, stage or not. That's, that's my, my drive. Now, uh, in terms of maybe like female athletes or female, female bodybuilders, are there any that you, uh, kind of look up to or so, some of the ladies that you respect? Um, I respect them all truly. I think it's um, hard to go against the grain and be something that's not only totally different, but the public gives you, um, you know, their input too. I really like Alina Popa, to be honest with you. I, I thought she was beautiful. I thought she was a great example of female bodybuilding and um she uh i think she she just led a very good example for for those to follow cool all right um so uh let us know ava at what age did you start lifting weights and then why did you li start lifting weights at that specific age i um had just gotten into college so i was 17 and um, I was a pretty overweight kid, to be honest with you. And and more so throughout high school, I struggled with weight. I remember seeing a female bodybuilder um, online and I just had said, like, that's what I want. And um, so I picked up the weights and I was more focused, I think, on the cardio aspect, because as a a, a kid basically you just kind of think what's the fastest way I can get in shape and um I took that and I ran with it I still lifted but of course I had no idea what I was doing yeah right okay now so so you saw a picture of a female bodybuilder and 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 you were kind of drawn to that or attracted to that uh what what I mean what was it specifically I mean, was it the, the muscle? Was it the, uh, you know, like the definition, the, uh, the conditioning? Like, I mean, most ladies don't want to, they don't want to get quote unquote too big. So what was it for you that you were like, I want to, I want to look like that. I don't know. I looked at it and I was like, that's kind of badass. Like that's, <laughs> that's what I want. And even, even more so, like I had begun going into vitamin shop and there was a pretty jacked lady. And I remember just trying to like talk to her and, um, you could tell she was a bodybuilder and, and it was just intriguing to me. Like it was different. I never wanted to be uh, like everybody else. And I wasn't to begin with. So um, I can remember being in like second grade and some kid, I had a, a crush on him at the time. He had, I was going up to sharpen my pencil and he was like, wow, your back is big. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of why, <laughs> but I was always broad Um I never, I'm, I was just never petite. So I think naturally I, I was drawn towards something that I could be potentially good at. Very cool. Very interesting. Okay. Um, so I like to kind of use that question just to transition into my guests upbringing a little bit. So if you don't mind, Ava, just talk a little bit about like where you grew up, talk about your childhood, um, you know, you mentioned being overweight as a younger person. So uh, maybe touch on that. Did that have like an effect on you in terms of, you know, maybe being uh, self-conscious? Did you get made fun of? Did you play any sports? Um, just take us up to about high school and then we'll transition from there. Okay. I was born in Connecticut. I lived there all my life until about a year and a half ago where I moved to uh, Pittsburgh. And I come from a huge family. So I have six other siblings. Um, we all got along pretty well. <laughs> I mean, 
aside from like your normal fights. I didn't play any kind of typical sports, no basketball, nothing like that. I rode horses um, from a young age and I continued that up until uh, college actually, where I, when I moved back home, I sold my horse and, and kind of pursued bodybuilding um, primarily. And I, I, that fell to the wayside, but um, yeah, I, I did struggle with my weight and I was a self-conscious kid and I'd be lying now if I said that um, all those thoughts kind of went away. I think they surface quite often. And, and even now transitioning into an off season, I find it hard to, to, put weight back on and, and block those thoughts out. It can be a little challenging. Um, I, so I'm curious, how did you get into horseback riding? Because that's uh, a, a unique endeavor and uh, not hey. everybody has a horse uh, standing around. So how did you get into that? Was that something passed on to you from uh, your parents or what? My mom, actually, she, um, she rode her life too. Um, you know, I got my first horse at about nine and, uh, I shared that with my mom. She had her own horse. Um, but, but I continued it as I got older, I took a break. And when I got back to, um, high school, my dad surprised me with a horse. So I am, I loved it and I would still do it, but it's, <laughs> it's hard to now. I mean, that cost and a bodybuilding cost, it's too much. Now, now, when you when you say horseback riding, did you like ride the horse and they jumped over like the hurdles and all that that I have seen on TV or not? <laughs> um, pretty heavily into barrel racing, so it's a uh, it's um like a speed event. Yeah, yeah. I they, they have them at like like the rodeos and stuff. I've seen that before. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me, Ava? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So, um, now, uh, you put a post on, uh, uh, after you, uh, got your IFBB pro card, one of your posts on Instagram, you mentioned something about kind of, uh, talking or alluding to how, how much this pro card meant to you, not necessarily because you got the pro card and you're now a professional bodybuilder, but you kind of talked a little bit about, you know, being up on that stage and how, when you were younger, uh, you, you had like a, a fear of standing up in front of people and giving speeches and stuff. And you would like take an F or whatever, or kind of try to get out of that if you had to do that in school. So I want you to talk about Ava just for a minute, uh, expound on that post and talk about how far you've come in terms of being able to stand up in front of people. Now you're flexing your muscles, you're presenting your, your body, like just talk about that transformation from being nervous, not wanting to talk in front of people when you're younger to now being able to stand in front of crowds and 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 sh and show off your physique, so touch on that for a minute. I I really struggled and um and I still do with presenting of any kind. I mean, I would I really would take failing grades for um, whatever the the assignment was. I just I I had a mental block. I was afraid of people making fun of me because they would notice that I was nervous. So it just snowballed and I was like, I'm not doing this. So, um, yeah, it means a lot to me because, um, although I was nervous to get on stage, I just got up there and I, and I really almost feel now like it's just completely like a blackout. Like you get up there, you do what you have practiced so many times. And it made me feel confident because I know that I worked hard on my physique for years now. So I, um, I think it was easier, although it was a bigger deal. And I'm, I'm just proud that I, I overcame that. Um, okay. So how, how does somebody like maybe, maybe a young person that's listening to this or, you know, somebody that like looks up to you, um, and, and maybe they, they're struggling with something like that. You know, maybe, maybe they're in high school, maybe they're in college and, you know, they have to give a speech tomorrow or something, but like, and I know you said you still kind of struggle with this, but, um, are there some, uh, like maybe, uh, affirmations or, 
or self-talk that you kind of have adopted now to kind of help you overcome some of that? Like walk us through or maybe give us some pointers how we can maybe overcome some of those struggles that we have of ourselves being self-conscious, not wanting to, you know, uh, stand up in front of people, things like that. I mean, is there, is there a way that you've kind of, uh, formed or working on a way to kind of break through some of those, uh, those mind blocks? Yeah. I mean, I, I try to practice like good confidence daily. Um, and although like some days are worse than others, I think just overall not being hard on yourself and, and celebrating like the, the good parts and, um, just recognizing the good parts that you have. Um, and also (laughs) it's going to sound lame, but like the night before the show, I was, I was freaking out to a degree. I was just like nervous. I was like, how am I gonna do this and um not look nervous and I really kind of just focused on my breathing I was like just block all of it out like don't put too much stress and emphasis on it to the point where like you drive yourself nuts and just kind of breathe like let it go tomorrow like do your thing and and let it be how it's supposed to be like because all the work that I put in I it was not for nothing so I think I noticed that I put emphasis on that, but I didn't want to suck myself down into a hole where um, I couldn't be my best. Um, so uh, now when you talk about like, you know, uh, kind of like focusing on the, the, the parts uh, of yourself that you like or focusing on the confidence, are, are these things that you actually like maybe like write down or write out? Um, or is it just kind of just mental, uh, thoughts in, in your mind? Uh, they're more mental. I, um, like, for example, I know that I put a lot of, um, emphasis and importance on my training. So like, I, I knew that that part, like I had checked that box. Like I was confident that I didn't, I didn't miss a beat. So those things like that, like th- that helped me feel good. It made, me, it gave me confidence that like, okay, I wasn't going to go on stage and be like totally out muscle because I knew that I, I did it. So, so basically what you're saying is preparation uh, creates confidence. Yeah, I'm, I believe that. Me too. Amen. Okay. So now, um, at some point, most of us, when we're in high school, we kind of start thinking about, you know, post high school, we think about what we want to be when we quote unquote grow up, we start thinking about a career. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, that you kind of started uh, weight training, or at least getting to a gym when you were in college. So um, where did you go to college? What did you study? What were you planning on doing with your life once you graduated from college? And then how has that unfolded since then? Yeah, I went to college in North Carolina for a bit. Um, I'll be honest, it was not for me. I liked the idea of getting out of Connecticut. And and I did love North Carolina, but like the school aspect itself, I just, it never appealed to me. So um, I went back home, took some online courses um, for a few years, actually. But um, I never had like a, a set, this is what I want to do. And I'm just going to do it. I think over the years, I've had influences that have been like hey you'd be good at this and I'd be like okay I'll give it a try and um, it never panned out because for me uh, if I'm not 100% into something I, I I'm not gonna be my best at it so um, I just went the route that I felt good in and that was bodybuilding And not to say like it was an idea to make a career at the time I think I just got more into it got bigger into personal training and, and, um, I'm still kind of finding my way too. So I don't have it all figured out yet. (laughs) No, no, nobody does Ava. Now you're not supposed to, they say you're not supposed to ask uh, a woman her age, but I'm going to ask you if you don't mind, how, how old are you? I am 25. Oh, geez. You're so young. (laughs) You got You got a, you got a whole decade on me. So I definitely don't have it figured out. So you, 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 uh, 
it, it, it's, it's all good now. So I guess before we transition fully into the bodybuilding talk, uh, so it sounds like just, you know, the, the way that you, you, you paid your bills up to this point, uh, is just through like personal training and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I've, over the years and especially during COVID, I was a little bit lost. Yeah, I think now it's it's becoming more of a, a full time thing for me. Okay, so I want to ask you about personal training, and then we'll we'll move on. But uh, okay, so in terms of like you know personal training, uh, training people, kind of helping other people reach their fitness goals, what have you. Um, what's something that you enjoy about that uh, process of helping others um, in terms of fitness and bodybuilding, and then. Maybe what is something that you've learned um, as you've personal trained, you know, in terms of connecting with people, helping them? What, what, have, what has that kind of taught you about yourself? So what do you like about helping others in terms of personal training? And then what have you learned about yourself up to this point through helping others through personal training? So um, I like that. I will I'll preface by saying I have a 70 year old client. He, he came to me, he knew nothing. He's never trained a day in his life. And um, I've been with him for over a year. And um, he just said like, you know, he, he wants to be better in shape. And he came to me a few months ago and he told me, Ava, like, I, I feel good. Like I feel better now than I did in the past decade. And that makes you feel good. You know, like he's, he's 70 and he's making an effort and and he feels good about himself. And um, he's had, a, I think he had a quadruple bypass years and years ago, but he, um, he was just really happy. He, he felt really healthy. And um, if I can make an impact like that on somebody that's older, like that, that's all worth it for me. And um, <laughs> it taught me that I'm extroverted in the right situations. <laughs> connect with people one-on-one -on -one, truly and like to build friendships mm -hmm. so now like they become part of your life and you help them get better and you just form connections it's it's a really nice thing i i agree um that's something i i, I you know uh concur with you or relate with you is that i i don't necessarily like being around large groups of people or or the, the, the way I should actually word it is I don't like group training myself personally. Like if I'm in the gym, I'm not going to be the person that's going to be jumping up and down and like, let's, let's, you know, let's get after it. I, I really enjoy connecting with another human being one-on-one -on -one because you can really, really get to know them. And, and like you said, form that bond, form that connection. Um, and, and there's just something unique about that because, I see personal training when somebody comes in a lot, like you said, this 70 year old individual never lifted weights, probably never been into a gym. And that can, that can be very intimidating for, for, for people. Right. But if we can, as trainers uh, and gym owners and things like that, if we can like welcome them in and connect with them and build that rapport, like you, you're going to see their confidence as they get stronger and meet their fitness goals, you're going to see their confidence uh, increase and, um, they're going to just be so grateful for you. Right. And, uh, that's just, a, that's just really powerful in my estimation. So I, I love that. Now let's, uh, let's start kind of getting, uh, uh, into all things bodybuilding talk. So you started lifting weights around 17 when you're in college. Why don't you, um, just talk about, uh, I, I believe if I remember correctly, you, you trained in Connecticut at the, uh, the, the super gym where Evan Senapani's, uh, kind of home base. So Talk, talk about being exposed to like real hardcore bodybuilding and how you kind of really dove into it uh, full, full steam. Awesome. You know, Evan was there. Um, Jamie Pinder was there, her husband at the time. It was different. It was cool. Like you go in there and you're like, wow, like this is actually bodybuilding. Um, but I still kind of did my own thing. I just took it up a notch because at that time, well, I mean, at that point I had gotten um, my first coach and um, I was just ready to rock, you know, like I had known at that point what I wanted. And um, I think I had to just tell myself down a little bit, not get too ahead 
and now I can say like I understand why because it truly is a process it takes time to build quality muscle and perfect your nutrition and uh, things like that but it was I was very lucky to have the super gym um, pretty much in my backyard it was very close so um talk about like uh you know when you kind of went from just like the cardio Ava to the, the bodybuilding Ava. So like how long have you actually, since you just turned pro at North Americans, how long have you actually been training and focusing on the lifestyle of, of a bodybuilder? So, um, we don't tell Zach. <laughs> I had a, a boyfriend at the time who kind of got me more into the bodybuilding side. And, um, um, it, it was all on me, but I kind of just learned more about what it takes to be a bodybuilder. And um, I was probably around 20. So it's been about five years that I've been hardcore focusing and really paying attention to the fine details, making sure you get all your meals in. And I think I had friends and family and um, even now, they'd probably still be like, Ava, like, you're bringing your meal here. And I'd be like, yeah, but it pays off. You know, like my dad came to North Americans and I don't think I've ever seen him so proud, honestly. So I think now most people realize like it's it's not just a, a phase, like it's something I really love to do. Um. So what what I guess I, I'm curious to ask, you just mentioned your dad. Uh, what do your parents think about this whole bodybuilding thing and having a daughter that's uh, jacked than more jacked than most guys? Um, they don't say much. Um, my dad is a very understanding person. So although he may have not agreed in my earlier years, he just kind of let me be. Um, he would sometimes have his two cents and be like, you're going to the gym today and I'd be like yeah but <laughs> that was it you know I think that um, all parents kind of have expectations or thoughts on what their child should do especially younger because like I don't know like immature minds and what have you but um I do think it was super important that he he saw me compete was like just supportive that that this was something I love. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Um, how how did you uh, um, you mentioned you had like a a coach? It sounds like pretty pretty early on. What what did uh, what did your training kind of look like uh, from the get go when you really got into bodybuilding, and how has it changed maybe over the years if it has? Definitely gotten more intense, more uh, precise, like just the sets and um you know like the the out like the outlay of it <laughs> it's different the bulk of it is the same so um I was always into compounds and um I was always trying to get stronger so although I didn't know so much what I was doing and how exactly to progress I always had a goal to be better whether or reps or so so has it kind of been progressive overload uh type training from from kind of the get-go for the most part it sounds like my first coach that was kind of um eye-opening for me probably not to the degree it is now at all but but um for a beginner yeah what uh what's your training split been like uh here recently so um ever since being with morgan he controls my my training and everything but our our plans are pretty intense they go from an a to b rotation and then cycle so a is five days b is four and it includes uh more so the heavy compounds and in rotation B, so we have deadlifts and squats, stuff like that. But um, the goal, I mean, the the 
actual exercises themselves don't change so much. We just aim to progress and keep the workouts intense. I think that's the number one thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I want to, I want to talk about, uh, in terms of you, excuse me, moving from Connecticut to Pittsburgh, I think that happened pretty recently. And, and what was kind of the impetus behind that? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Um, I moved here for him. Oh, okay. He got together. That was what you asked, right? Why yeah. Moved. Yeah. Why, why you moved to, to Pittsburgh? Yeah. Connecticut. I started talking to Zach. He was in, um, he was about an hour outside of Pittsburgh and we landed on here. Cause I think there was not much for me there. And, um, I wasn't going to go all that way outside of Pittsburgh. And, um, he too, at the time was focusing on his competition. Um, it was just kind of, we, we settle here or we, we put it off a little bit. So it's been, it's been a ride, <laughs> but I like it. I do. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, your significant other is Zach Merkel, 2019, Mr. USA. Um, how did you guys, uh, how did you guys connect or how did you guys meet? Um, I sent him a message. I told him, or I suggested he should come to, uh, the super gym. This was, I think after maybe a few months after his, his 2019 win. So I had never heard of him prior. And I think Boston Lloyd posted a, a photo of him. And I was like, I, I don't even know who this guy is, but I'm interested. <laughs> so it went from there, but he, um he had some stuff going on, you know, his, his heart comp a little bit after. So, we didn't end up meeting until the following year. Now, uh, when you say you sent him a message, uh, are you just kind of referring to you sent him a, a DM on social media or what? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Which, if you know me, is totally unlike me. You know, I, I've never, I've never done anything like that. But I don't know. I don't know what it was. And it worked out pretty well, so I'm not mad. No, you, you shouldn't be mad, but I want to know, I mean, what, what, how did you like reach out to him uh, through the message? How, what, what did you, what did you say? Do you remember? That he should come train. But I will say like, it wasn't totally out of left field. I think he had posted something and I was responding to it. So I didn't just like slide right in and say whatever. It was all relevant. Okay. You, you kind of had it all planned out then, huh? Oh, but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so uh, now you mentioned uh, Morgan. Uh, so you're referring to your current coach, Morgan Rice. Why don't you talk about um, connecting with him, why you connected with him? He's, he's local there in Pittsburgh, from my understanding. Um, how has he kind of helped elevate you in terms of an athlete and a bodybuilder? has um tenfold he truly is a great coach i got with him um through zach because he is zach's coach and um to be honest at first like i wanted him to coach me for a few months but i was like oh i don't want to step on any toes here like i don't know how to do it so zach finally had said something and i was like okay great <laughs> let's do it and um it, it's just been awesome you know he's a no bs guy like he will not lead you in the wrong direction. I think all he wants is for you to to follow the plan and you'll get the result. But um, he he really does care. He cares about his athletes a lot. So um, I guess I want to ask you. I want I want to pull a little bit more out in terms of Morgan and and, and the coaching thing. Uh, for you specifically, obviously there's a connection because of Zach and I'm sure, you know, Zach being your significant other, Zach speaking highly of Morgan, that makes you comfortable. But as a female, as a woman, uh, you know, having, having a coach and things like that, especially a male, like, um, you know, like what is it about, you know, Morgan that just, 
that you have that comfort level outside of him being uh, Zach's coach. What, what makes more, how, how does that make you comfortable with Morgan? Like, what is it about him that makes you comfortable? What, what, what about Morgan makes you just kind of like confident in, in him as a coach? Because he's confident in himself. And not only that is he, he walks the walk too. I mean, he's also, he doesn't compete now, but he bodybuilds too. So it's not like, um, like, and I do think he is his own coach. So um, he's confident in himself, which it makes me feel confident because I know he knows what he's doing and I know he wouldn't steer me in the wrong direction and he knows his stuff. So I really can say like, I haven't had a worry when it comes to him. I just, I, the only thing I have learned is just kind of shut up and do your job and that's it. Uh, so any ladies out there that are watching or listening to this, Ava, what would you suggest for them in terms of finding, um, you know, the right coach or a good coach for them? I have seen a lot of stuff lately on Instagram, specifically people reposting, uh, an individual and some of his shadiness in terms of coaching specifically with female clients. I don't want to get into that, but, um, I know there's a lot of nonsense out there in terms of coaching especially with females and male coaches. So how can a lady find the right coach or what should they be looking for to, to find a coach that's going to be able to help them as, as a, as a woman competitor? Well, I think like it's important to do your own research and, and just um, kind of familiarize yourself with what you would be comfortable with and find a coach that uh, aligns with that. And further, um, I think it's, their client base will speak for them. So I think it's important that they have a, a reputable, uh, just a, a good reputation, so to say, and um, clients that speak highly of them. And, and I'm not, um, sorry, think of how to say it. Um, you're okay what was um the last part that you said that we were going over oh just just uh how a, a female can find uh, a right coach for themselves yeah, that, that pretty much what I said is what I stand behind. I think it's just important to talk to the coach and and understand where they're coming from and, and make sure that you have the same beliefs. Okay, so uh, I want to I wanna ask you about something else uh, you just posted recently on your Instagram. I think it was your Instagram stories. You said something about uh, you were kind of, it was kind of like a, a, a thank you Um uh, post in terms of like people reaching out saying, Hey, we, this is what we'd like to see from you. You, maybe you had asked, like, what would you guys like to see uh, from me in terms of content wise? I um, mean, you were just saying like, I, I appreciate all the, the feedback and everybody reaching out. Um, there's just some things though, that I'm not going to do. So will you expound on that and, and talk about like the direction you would love to see female bodybuilding going and how you're how you want to be a part of maybe a, a new wave or a new generation of female bodybuilding. T touch on that, please. For sure. I, um, I, myself, I just don't like to be sexualized in bodybuilding. I don't like to do photo shoots that are totally revealing or, or anything of that sort. And, and I don't care who does, to be honest with you. I mean, that's none of my business. They look beautiful, but, um, I, I hold myself to a, a high standard in that regard. And I, I want the respect that comes with that. Not to say that they're not respected, but um, for myself, I'm not an overly outward person. Um, so I, I just like to remain professional and um, I want my bodybuilding to follow in that same direction. Now and I'm not 
ton of women in bodybuilding, female bodybuilding that are like that. I think there's more and more coming out. But I think the ones that you see higher up, I think they get a lot of that attention because they are so open, which is fine. I mean, it's to each their own. So, so what, what's kind of like your vision for female bodybuilding? What's your vision for yourself? Um, you know, going forward now as an IFBB pro female bodybuilder, like what, how, how are you going to put yourself out there? How are you going to inspire, um, like younger women, young, younger girls, uh, in terms of it's okay to be a female bodybuilder because female bodybuilding, the truth is it, it was, it was basically dead until Jake Wood bought the Olympia. And then obviously before then he was promoting a uh, female bodybuilding, but I would say he has single-handedly kept female bodybuilding alive because it was gone out of the, the Olympia. It's been gone out of a lot of other big competitions around the world. It, it was basically dead except for Jake Wood and his, his competition. So um, how, how, how do you want to move female bodybuilding forward? How, how, how is Ava Melillo going to inspire young women and young girls to pursue female bodybuilding? If, if that's what they want to do, like, like you did when you were 17, 18, 19. Yeah. I want to show them like, you can have the physique you want and you can stay feminine. You don't have to go, um, with the crowd. You don't have to do things you're uncomfortable with to reach your goal. I want to capitalize on training. I think training is super important and your nutrition, that's your backbone. I mean, you, there's things that you can do training that are going to build a physique and density that, that other exercises may not. And I think people shy away from it because it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard, but, um, it's important. Just, just get down with it, like get with it, have fun with it. it. It's a really great thing when you, when you think about it and it does a lot for a physique and a lot for your mind. But, um, I think people like to see that you can do this. You can be a female bodybuilder and be feminine. I think that's a, a huge one. And I think that's why it was shut down and because it's cool to look at big physiques i mean men's open they attract a lot i i you would think if you had like so many great female bodybuilders that embodied all of it that i don't know if it would have gone away so that's just my my thought process okay now i'm going to touch on this very lightly and then we're going to kind of get into north american stock because this is this to me. This is this is is important, especially somebody as young as you, um, somebody that that just turned pro, somebody who really wants to, uh, you know, just bring maybe a a new direction to female bodybuilding. And so, just um, I'm going to ask you in terms of PEDs, what are some resources specifically for females that they can maybe seek out? Uh, to maybe learn more about that before they would maybe move in that direction. That's, that's, I just want to touch on that very lightly. I don't want to get into any more details, but outside of like hiring a coach, are there some resources out there specifically for ladies to kind of learn more about PEDs and how they interact with their bodies and things like that? Or, or do you not know of any outside of just maybe from, from a coach? Um, well, a coach is super important. But also, I think uh, more and more women are coming out with, um, they, they'll talk about it. I can name a few like off the top of my head. I don't want to, but <laughs> um, they uh, there are women that talk about it and they, uh, they'll they share kind of their experience. And it's important to note that it's not the same for everybody. So what works for somebody may not work for another, but um, I do think your own research and um, talking to other female competitors and a coach are, are going to give you good insight. Okay, cool. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about North American. So um, when did you officially start prep for North Americans and how did the prep go through your eyes? We started um, March or April. 
I want to say mid March. Um, the prep went well. It it took off more towards the end. Um, I think Morgan was learning my body more, and and I was certainly, um, just re responding to the diet as we got closer. But um, the first five weeks were kind of a wash. I want to say we were just, just struggling to to get started with the weight loss, but overall it, it was a good prep. Uh, how high did your cardio get? Uh, I had a stretch of a few days where it was three times a day, um, fasted post-workout and before bed, I believe. And it was 40, I think 45, 20 post-workout and then 45 before bed. It was tough. <laughs> it was tough. Okay. Now, uh, you know, having a, having a physique, like you said, you, when you're younger, you're a little bit overweight and things like that. Um, did you find during this prep Ava that, uh, or, or, you know, from maybe, uh, previous experiences, it, are you a, a pretty good responder in terms of the, of weight training and putting on muscle, but is it kind of hard for you to, to lose that weight and to, to really get shredded? How, how did that kind of unfold for this prep? I, I think I knew that before any type of diet in my life, I just kind of, I'm very easy to gain weight. Um, and I want to say it's, it's fairly easy for me to build muscle, um, as opposed to losing weight. Um, and I don't know if that has anything to do with my overweight childhood or, or whatever. It's just stubborn fat, but yeah, definitely, definitely harder to lose weight. Okay. Is did you find? Because uh, I, I hear different competitors, specifically uh, male competitors, but um, I hear a lot of competitors or coaches talking about you know somebody could uh, you know their their uh, their 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 legs might come in quicker than let's say their their upper back or their lower back or different areas of their body get more shredded or more lean quicker than other areas. Did you find that? Uh, to be true for yourself during this prep and what, what areas did you really have to try to focus on to get that last bit of fat or, or water out before you stepped on stage? Definitely my, my stomach, um, always struggled with it. I think I probably always will. That being said, it will be the last thing to come in, I'm sure. But I think as we prep more and more and I compete more and more, the process will will get smoother over time. Cool. So why don't you walk us through, um, you competed at North Americans. That's right there in Pittsburgh. So that's kind of cool. You didn't, you didn't have to fly or drive uh, too far. Um, when did you, uh, when did you ladies step on stage for prejudging? We were early. I think we were between eight and nine. Okay. Uh, and, and what, what day was that? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You were the third. Oh, it was on Saturday? With uh, bikini and wellness competitors. Okay, so uh, walk us through pre-judging. How, how, how did it go? What were your thoughts and feelings after pre-judging was done? We, uh, we went up. We did our individual routines. Um, they, we came back around. They put us back in for a lineup. Um, I was moved to the center. And then we kind of just... It, I mean, it was fast. It was very fast. There was not a ton of women. So um, I just went home after that, relaxed. We got back to the venue at probably 4.30 that day. I want to say it's been a little bit now. So I want to say we went back on around between five and six. And um, that was pretty fast. <laughs> it was, yeah, there's not a ton of female bodybuilders and you compare it to the amount in bikini and wellness and I think they just wanted to be efficient there were so many other competitors but overall it was it, it went smooth for um my division okay now you you're in the first call outs for pre-judging you get moved to the middle right away what I mean obviously when you're a bodybuilder, that's, that's what we all want. We want to be, uh, moved to the center in the first call out. So, uh, what, 
any thoughts, any feelings, any emotions, or was it kind of just like zoned out, blacked out, just doing, doing what you're supposed to do? Most of it zoned out. I found Morgan in, in the crowd and my eyes kind of just like, like I felt at ease after because I knew like he was there. He knew what was going on. I knew what was going on, but um, I was confident at, at that point in my ability to present my physique. Oh, um, my friends were there. I could hear them. So it, it made me feel good. It was awesome. How, how does, uh, what's Morgan like? Uh, I, I kind of, you know, get a hint of how he is just through Instagram and a lot of the other athletes that he coaches that have been on the podcast, but what's he like on, on show day? I mean, is he, uh, you know, giving you like pep talks? Is he just kind of let you do your own thing? How did he approach you specifically on uh, North Americans competition day? He was awesome to me. I think he knew I was a little bit nervous. Um, so the days leading up, he sent me a, a text message and it, I reread it like daily at that point because um, he's, like I said, no bullshit. So he would never lie to me. The message just said like you're the best female amateur bodybuilder right now. Just kind of do it. Just finish whatever we started. And um, I'm showing it also phenomenal. Like, it's with me. We had the event before I, I got there for finals. Like, he, he did not let me down. Um, can, you, can you sit back up, Ava? Because you're breaking up a little bit. Maybe or move your phone closer or whatever so your mic's a little bit closer to you, please. Um, okay, so... Uh, then we, uh, so you go into the night show, um, talk about, uh, you know, obviously you, 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 you won. Um, why don't you talk about, uh, just kind of like what you felt, what, what was it like after you got your pro card, you got the overall, you accomplished exactly what you and, and, and Morgan wanted to accomplish. Walk us through that for, for, uh, for a couple minutes. Yeah, it's odd because it's I think about it now and it's still surreal. And it's like uh I don't know, you put all this work into it and you finally get to it and you win and it's hard to wrap your head around. Um, but it was an amazing feeling at the time. Um, I felt super proud of just getting there and, and securing the win and um it felt good to do it in front of the people that I love. It, it was just an, an awesome experience for me. So what's, what's next for you, Ava? How long are you guys going to be uh, taking an off season? Have you guys talked about, uh, you know, pro debut, anything like that? Why don't you just uh, unpack that for a minute? We have not talked about a pro debut. It will be at some point next year. Um, I do want to give him kind of the reins, um, and the decision to say, okay, like he's happy with where we're at in an off season. So now let's transition to a prep. And what do you think about this show or that show? Um, Cause like I said, he hasn't steered me in the wrong direction yet. And then I'll give him like the, okay, we'll do this. Or let's maybe think about something else. I like his input. I do. I like, I, I like to hear what he has to say because it, it takes the guesswork off me if it were up to me i'd be like okay well i still need to grow for another year so <laughs> so um <clears throat> is uh zach gonna be stepping on stage uh next year or is that uh confidential information i i think he will and our plan is now that i'm a pro as well to kind of find a show that would have both men's and women's bodybuilding because that takes um, it, it takes that time that we would have where one of us is prepping and the other isn't away, so we can kind of be on the same page. But um, if not, it's also not a huge deal. Whatever is best, but I think he does plan to. Cool. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to see you step on stage, but I'm I'm also excited to see uh, Zach because I think anybody that really loves bodybuilding. Uh, and is, and really follows, you know, the IFBB, I mean, Zach's got a, a world of potential and I think it's just, 
he's just got to take that time to put on that mask to, to compete with the big boys. Right. Right. So, um, let's, I, I know your, your competitive bodybuilding career literally has just started your, your, your IFBB pro career has literally just started, but, um, what would you, you know, like to accomplish, let's just say in the next five years. So that would put you at 30 years old. What would you like to accomplish within the next five years, Ava, as an IFBB pro female bodybuilder? Well, for sure. I'd like to win a pro show and go to the Olympia. I think that's every competitor's end goal. Um, at least serious competitors. I know some people like to compete and just, um, do it because they truly love it, which I do, but I, um, I want more. Like I, I always think I'll want more, a higher placing, a better physique. So, um, that's the goal though. It is. And, um, I'm super excited just to work towards it. Uh, do you at some point want to win, uh, the Olympia then I'm assuming? Well, I would love to say yes. And yes, but, uh, current Miss Olympia. She's, she's incredible. So as much as, um, I have goals, I'm also a bit realistic. You're, you're, you're being, you're being politically correct right now, Ava. You're being, too, <laughs> you're being too kind. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay, good. Uh, and that's okay. It's I, I, I get it. You don't, you don't want to come across as arrogant or anything, but, um, no. okay. I, I do want to ask you this, this is, I, I, this is what I feel. I feel like, uh, you know, you, you've had, you know, like we all do, we all, we're human beings, right? So we have different struggles, we have different insecurities, but I really feel like just kind of like hearing your story, uh, you know, listening to you talk about bodybuilding, like, first of all, you found uh, a love and you found a passion in bodybuilding. But second of all, I feel like uh, the word that pops up when I, I'm hearing you talk about bodybuilding and, and your story is, is confidence. Like, bodybuilding has given you an identity and it's, and it's given you a confidence. Is that fair to, fair to say? And if so, expound, expound on that for a second. Yeah, it is. And, and I was just thinking, as you were talking about that, like no matter what happens in my day, like I could have the worst day, I still go to the gym and I look forward to going to the gym because it is a place that makes me feel good. Um, so yeah, it's really become like a huge part of my life. You know, like I, even on vacation, I eat my meals, I have fun. I do. I really do. But I, um, it's important to me to, to check my boxes and, um, some people may disagree and that's fine, but I, I just love the lifestyle with or without the stage. Right. And, and that, and that has created a confidence in your life, right? For sure. Um, is there a, in terms of, uh, you know, women strength training and, and, and more specifically training for hyper hypertrophy and bodybuilding, like, have you found for yourself and maybe training other ladies or paying attention to other ladies uh, that are within, uh, you know, the bodybuilding realm or fitness realm, is there a different way that ladies maybe will get, uh, better results in terms of hypertrophy, uh, in regards to the training, uh, you know, compared to, to men or can women train exactly like men? Like what, what is that in terms of like your experience personally? Yeah. Train the same. No, no there. <laughs> okay. Train, train intense. Um, yeah, I, I see no reason to, to separate the two. Okay. I, I mean, I've just heard that like with ladies, uh, you know, specifically they, they might need some, some higher volume and actually maybe like, like you're saying that intensity is even more important for ladies because, Obviously, you guys, most of you aren't, uh, you know, uh, prone to muscle growth like like us guys, right? You just don't have the testosterone and things like that. So um, is, is maybe a little bit more volume something that that maybe is needed for, for ladies? Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest and just say no. I, I don't think that there's any one way to train and especially for for men and women. I think you can train the exact same and, and get the same results, but I think connecting to the muscle and actually uh, putting emphasis on the sets is it that's going to be your your you know what's going to make it for you 
it's not going to be like just going through the sets. And I think that's where a lot of women and men shy away from it is like I said prior, it, it's tough. Mm. But I think the, the serious ones understand and um, it's, it's, it's the same and it's intense and it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those who get it will get it. Those who don't never will. So, um, tw uh, last time, maybe there might, it might be like 14 or 15 now, but, uh, you, you don't have a whole lot of, uh, posts on Instagram. So talk to us about Instagram. It, it's, it, it must not maybe be your thing. Like most girls have like thousands of posts. What, what's, what's the deal with the low numbers of posts on Instagram, Ava? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, the two weeks post show, my training is not what it normally is. It, this is higher rep, kind of get in the gym, get out of the gym, um, type pump workouts just to get the body used to training again. Um, but I, I plan to showcase kind of what I'm doing. Um, and more so just my daily life. I think people, I've gotten at least feedback that people want to see what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I'm happy to show it. It's not the most glamorous thing ever, but it's um, it's bodybuilding and it's me and I'm for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you're a work, on, you're a work in progress when it comes to IG then, huh? Yeah, I'm getting there. Don't worry. Okay. No, I, yeah, you've, you've, I don't know. You've posted maybe three times after your competition. So it's good. It's good. <laughs> um, I guess a couple fun questions. The first one, um, after you uh, got your pro card and, and won the overall at North Americans, um, did anybody start following, following you on Instagram? Any, did anybody comment on a post of yours? Did anybody congratulate you that you were like, wait a minute, you had to kind of take a double look or it kind of caught you off guard that they reached out to you? If so, who? Lots of people. I got a lot of female bodybuilders um, commenting and in my DMs and um, even Evan. I know Evan. I've been around Evan for years when I was at the super gym, but it's cool to see like this bodybuilder that you look up to that is huge. That's um, I mean, he's just a, a very well-known guy. Just kind of post you. You're like, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, an, it's neat. Did uh, So when you were training at the super gym, um, I mean, did you have some conversations with Evan? I mean, did, did he ever give you any pointers or were, was he over here and you were kind of over here? How did, how did that work out? Oh, I did train with him. Um, he put me through a session one time. I think I posed with him as well one time, but um, really over the last year or so, like we just kind of talk here and there on IG um, more so during my prep. Um, and I think he thought I was still in Connecticut. So I don't know if he still trains so much at the super gym, but he's just a very nice guy and, and very open to help with whatever you need. Um, another, another fun question here. Uh, once you got off the stage, what was the first food or meal that you had off your, uh, uh, prep plan, so to speak? Um, I had steak. I was all for bread. I wanted bread really bad. Um, and what's the, that corn? Is it elote? I don't know. I think we had that. I think that's how you pronounce it. But yeah, it was very good. Did, have you had any? Okay, you had steak. That's not really like a cheap food. Have you had any ice cream, any cake, anything like outrageous or not really? Not really. My stomach that night especially was a little bit full. Okay. Um, the steak was not like just the steak. It was like different steaks. Um, all fattier cuts. So yeah, it gave me a little bit of a tummy ache, but, um, I didn't overload. I didn't feel the need to overload. Oh. Um, what's, uh, what's a couple of your biggest gym pet peeves, Ava? Um, like sitting on a machine, but you're claiming another machine, but you're on your phone on the first machine. So you're like super setting, but you're not being efficient. I can't stand that. <laughs> Especially at like prime hour, six o'clock, seven o'clock, and you want to get home and 
go to bed and you can't get on your machine. Yeah. Now, I think I've heard a, a rumor, maybe from another one of Morgan's uh, athletes, that Morgan in those situations may take matters into his own hands. Is that true or is that false? Yeah, he might sit there. <laughs> sit there and wait. <laughs> okay. He's, he's not going to go up to that kid and tell him like, hey, man, we need to borrow this or what? Hey, yeah, he might, but he's not like, uh, he's not like mean about it. He's just like, you know, get on your shit, get it together. And, and you know, if you're not going to use it, get off. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Any other gym pet peeves besides that? Oh, I'm sure. The texting. Um, I don't like when people leave like a bunch of weights on leg press or like a squat bar. Cause then you got to take the time and take it off and it's a lot of work. I think people can tend to be lazy if they know somebody else will do it. For sure. Do you, do you and Zach uh, ever train together or do you guys train together all the time or never, or what does that look like? Together all the time. Okay. Um, lately, like the past two weeks, not so much because like I said, I'm still on that kind of post-show training split, but it picks back up next week. So We'll be pretty consistent again. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Okay, Ava, I think uh, I think we kind of covered all the bases today. Uh, I, I Like I said, I think earlier, there's, I think, quite a few people that um, are looking forward to, to hearing uh, your story. I've had people sending me DMs and commenting, like, where's where's Ava's episode and all that? So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting this out. I want to thank you so much for coming on, sharing your story. Uh, it's, it's really encouraging. I I'm looking forward to you putting out more content and kind of showing behind the scenes. Cause I think, uh, that's going to do, uh, do a lot for just, uh, pushing uh, female bodybuilding into a, a, a new direction, a positive direction. So, so thank you so much for coming on before I do a quick outro, outro Ava, um, any final thoughts, any final words, any shout outs? Um, I'm going to turn it over to you and then I'll do a quick outro and that'll be a wrap. So, uh, anything that you want to leave us with, uh, go for it. Yeah, I'd like to just thank Morgan, to be honest with you, and um, all the people like the the behind the scenes people who make it work, you know, like Zach, my posing um, instructor, like it, it really takes a lot of people and a lot of effort on on so many levels. So um, I want to thank those people. And I'm excited for the future. You, you should be. What's your Instagram, Ava? Uh, at Ava Melillo. Okay. You'll have to spell it somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll have it. I'll have it down in the show notes so uh, people can can find it in the show notes. Um, I do want to. I guess I do want to ask you kind of a question that I ask most guests. Just a one last question to kind of wrap it up. Um, what do you feel like bodybuilding has taught you, or what do you feel like bodybuilding has given you? Uh, like you said before, almost an identity. Like it's become who I am and, and what I do. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it or train or have my meals and, and have a goal in mind. So it, it me a lot. It's given me um, more than I thought it would. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Ava. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. All of you who are tuning in to another episode of Behind the Muscle Podcast. I just want to say thank you so very much. Uh, if it weren't for all of you, the podcast would not exist. I appreciate all of you. I value all of you. Um, before we wrap up this uh, awesome conversation with Ava today, if you guys would do me two uh, huge favors, if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And then also please take this episode with Ava, share it on your Instagram stories, Make sure you tag Ava, go ahead and uh, tag her coach, Morgan Rice. And then also don't forget to tag Behind the Muscle Podcast. Um, that's a great way for us to know that you guys listened specifically to this episode and found great value in it, in which I know you did. It's also a great way for uh, people that have never watched Behind the Muscle Podcast or never, never heard of Behind the Muscle Podcast to find it. They're going to watch, they're going to listen, and they're going to be positively impacted uh, by the athletes and coaches stories 
that are being shared on Behind the Muscle podcast. So please uh, share this episode on your Instagram stories. And finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.